weekend we enter once again the so-called ordinary time of the church's year with this 11th Sunday of the year the Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Alison Shepherd. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to all my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary and her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From Rephidim, the Israelites set out again. And when they reached the wilderness of Sinai, there in the wilderness they pitched their camp. There, facing the mountain, Israel pitched camp. Moses then went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Say this to the house of Jacob, declare this to the sons of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did with the Egyptians, 
how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. From this you know, know that if you obey my voice and hold fast to my covenant, you of all the nations shall be my very own, for all the earth is mine. I will count you a kingdom of priests, a consecrated nation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Lord God. from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. We were still helpless when at his appointed moment Christ died for sinful men. It is not easy to die for even a good man, though of course for someone really worthy a man might be prepared to die. But what proves that God loves us is that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Having died to make us righteous, is it likely that he would now fail to save us from God's anger? When we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, we were still enemies. Now that we have been reconciled, surely we may count on being saved by the life of his son. Not merely because we have been reconciled, but because we are filled with joyful trust in God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have already gained our reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory when Jesus saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. 
He summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits with power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the zealot. And Judas Iscariot, the one who was to betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them as follows. Do not turn your steps to pagan territory, and do not enter any Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. You received without charge, Give without charge. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who do You Think You Are is a program regularly aired by the BBC. You know the scheme. People sign up for the program. They go along. They try to discover something about their ancestry. And sometimes there's some pleasant surprises. You know, you discover they're actually descended from royalty. Or you might discover that your relatives in the 19th century were criminals deported to the Antipodes. The fascination, however, is to see where you've come from and to see your family tree and to show your roots. Excuse the pun. Within the family of the church, we might also like to know where we have come from. And actually, we can say that we are descended from one of the apostles, in a real sense. As I approach another anniversary of ordination at the end of this week, I'm thinking already about my own ordination that I received at the hands of Bishop Thomas McMahon 39 years ago. And when the bishop laid his hands upon my head, he was making a gesture that the bishop who ordained him did, and the one before that did, right the way back in an unbroken line to the Last Supper. So, in a very real sense, we can say that we are descendants from one of the apostles and I in my more sort of whimsical moments think you know did I get my holy orders from Peter or John or James or whoever is what the church calls apostolic succession the unbroken line that exists in the Catholic Church only in the Catholic Church going back in that unbroken line to Jesus himself and the twelve the church has cherished and preserved this down through the centuries But so to every one of you who's been baptized, you know, you've received baptism from the hands of a priest who was ordained by a bishop who went back again to the Last Supper. That gesture of the laying on of hands, conferring the power of Jesus on subsequent generations of priests. So maybe when you look up at the apostles around the church here, at least when they're all present and correct, you might think that you've got your faith your baptism, the sacraments, descended from one of those. That's our family tree. But what's even more important than that, in a sense, is the fact that we just didn't get our sacramental grace and faith from the apostles, but we were given another nature. And that nature was, as the word apostle indicates in the Greek, apostolos, someone who is sent. And we are sent in the same way. Maybe not like the apostles being sent abroad to all parts of the known world, but sent to the people that we know. Because we already live in a mission land. This is pagan territory. And we're sent to the ones that we know already. My family, my relatives, my friends, the people I work and socialize with. I'm sent to them so that they also 
if they do not know it, may share in the message of salvation. So, am I concerned about the salvation of those others in my life? Do I live with them in such a way that I'm constantly looking out for their spiritual well-being, for the salvation of their souls? Listen to some words of St. John Chrysostom, 4th century Bishop of Constantinople, Istanbul today, in the 4th century. He says, he preached, There is no one colder than a Christian who is not interested in the salvation of others. Now do not use your poverty as an excuse. The widow who gave her might will accuse you. Do not use your humble background as an excuse. The apostles were of modest background. Nor should you use your lack of knowledge as an excuse. They were unlettered men. Slave or fugitive, you must do what you can. And do not use poor health as an excuse, because Timothy was frequently ill. Each of us can be useful to our neighbour if we do all we can. Last Wednesday, I travelled to Salford, Manchester, for our twice-yearly annual meetings, meetings of Vicars General. Now, this is, we get together, Vicars General, from around the country twice a year, not to compare notes on our bosses, but to exchange ideas, experiences, and best practice, so that we can be effective in the carrying out of our responsibilities that have been given to us. And it's never a surprise, no matter what part of the country you live in or come from, the challenges are pretty much the same. We're all facing mass indifference everywhere at the present time. We've seen a huge falling away from Christ and from the church. We've seen the various crises in living the faith, the various crises in living on a material level. We're living in times that are unprecedented. Yet for all of this, we are some of the most fortunate people in the world right now. Just look at what's happening on the shores of our continent at the moment. Refugees, migrants, asylum seekers who are risking life and limb to find freedom, peace, security. And here we are with everything, more or less. And so speeding through the countryside on Wednesday, not in the car, speeding through the countryside on the train, gave me a picture of one of those pictures that our Lord gives us in the gospel. We've just heard it. Fields full of life, crops coming to fruition, an image of the harvest of heaven. But, Jesus warns us, it's a crop, it's a harvest that is rich, but lacking in laborers for his kingdom. And when it comes to the harvest of souls, we can't import cheap labor from abroad because it's the responsibility of each one of us. And of course the temptation will always be for us to believe that we aren't properly equipped for the task, perhaps that, perhaps that we don't even desire it, that it would be better if I was living in a different place, a different age, then I could be a better person, then I could be more faithful, then I could be more engaged. We can't live like mystical, wishful thinkers. We are where we are for a good reason, for God's reason, who has put us here. Now, in reality, this means living in the present moment, in this present reality, contentedly, despite all of the limitations, disadvantages, and dilemmas that we face. It means that if I'm a priest or a religious sister, for example, I have to live faithfully the commitments I made on the day of my ordination, on the day of my vows, living faithfully, contentedly, where God has put me. If you're married, it means living with fidelity the vows that you made. If your parents cooperating faithfully with God in the joy of procreation, in raising children in the ways of the faith. If you're a professional, it means working cheerfully and meticulously for the glory of God and so influencing your fellow workers 
And if you're a student or a child, it means working well for the sake of the future so that you can take your place as a conscientious member of society in the future. What Jesus is wanting to make clear is that we matter and that we have to make a difference. We're not just meant to be content, you know, by getting by, by thinking, you know, it will do somehow. We can't just believe that we're like some struggling football team avoiding to avoiding relegation. You know, just keep playing. Let's hope for a draw before the whistle goes, before we get relegated. Or, you know, treading water. We're not meant just to be getting by. That's not what an apostle is. We're supposed to be striving to be saints. Because a saint is someone who gets to heaven. And we have to bring others with us. Yes, we don't go to heaven alone. We have to take our husbands, our wives, our children, all those who are near to us, and also those who are far from God. And all this was the lovely spiritual wisdom of blessed Carlo Acutis. I've been speaking to you about him in recent weeks. Blessed Carlo Acutis was so beautifully influenced by the lives of the saints. And he can speak to us again now in this month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, especially just having celebrated that feast on Friday, the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary yesterday. Blessed Carlo says, the heart of Jesus and the heart of Mary are linked indissolubly. And when we receive Holy Communion, we are in direct contact with Our Lady and the saints in heaven. And God is never so happy as when souls draw close frequently to his great gifts in the Eucharist and in the sacrament of confession. Praise be Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of man, consumption of the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have the world. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As members of God's consecrated people, reconciled in Christ, we bring our needs to the Father. We pray this weekend for all fathers. May they be the best of teachers to their children, guiding them by their love and example, so that they may receive honour from them and from society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our young people who are undertaking exams at this time, May the Holy Spirit refresh them in their studies and preserve them from anxiety. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For peace in our world at this time, that the suffering people of Ukraine may be given fortitude and their aggressors receive the grace of conversion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died recently. 
John Cooper, Caroline Gagan, Jimmy McCrimmon, and Eileen Gurney. We pray also for those whose anniversaries occur about this time. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. We join all our prayers with those of our Mother Mary as we pray, Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In silence, let us ask for God's healing power in our lives. Father, hear the prayers of your family. Grant us what you have inspired us to ask for in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. With the hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal Sack Mystery, he accomplished the marvellous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to be called a royal race, a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty deed. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. Holy Lord, Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we pray. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate.
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. offer each other some sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. At this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, it foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one tweak to the Mass schedule in the coming week. Tomorrow the Mass is at 10.30 in the morning. It's the Requiem Mass for John Cooper. And to those of us to whom it's concerned, I wish you a happy Father's Day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the masses and dead. <laughs>